Hey guys, I'm Brandon from Sasquatch Bee Studios. Welcome. I wanted to make this video for you guys to kind of just act as a resource so that you can see what tools my wife and I are using to make our game Samurado. I'm mostly going to be talking about software, but I will show you some of our hardware in the end as well. And I do just want to be upfront and say that you do not need the same stuff that we are using in order to make games. There are so many great tools and resources out there for you to be able to make games. This is really just meant to act as a resource or even to just give you some fun new ideas to help you improve your workflow. So to kick off, the game and engine is the really big one. And we use Unity to develop our game. And I'll be totally honest, I've never tried another modern engine. If you've ever been in the market to buy a house before, then you'll know that when you're house hunting, you'll walk into a house and sometimes you just know this is the one, this is the house that you want to buy. That feeling was the same feeling that I got when I used Unity for the first time. That was quite a few years ago now. I've heard nothing but fantastic things about the Unreal Engine and Godot as well. But for the way that I build projects, I find Unity's workflow to be very intuitive to me. Unity uses a component-based structure, which means it's very natural for you to use composition over inheritance. It has a whole second set of components, lights, renderers, and tools for 2D games versus 3D games, which is really important because there are a lot of styles of 2D games. You might want to work with tiles. You might want to work with individual sprites. You might want to be able to deform or swap sprites based on certain shapes, which Unity calls sprite shapes. I love that the Unity Hub allows you to have multiple versions of Unity installed on your computer at the same time. And I also love the asset store. There's obviously a really big collection of really useful assets, and I've built up quite a collection of them over time. And honestly, I take it for granted sometimes, but one of my favorite things about Unity is that you'll code in C Sharp. I've dabbled with a couple of different scripting languages, and C Sharp is such a joy to work with. So if you use Unity, that is the language you will be coding in. And this seems like the perfect segue into our next section, which is the code editor. I use Microsoft Visual Studio Community 2022 for two very, very simple reasons. One, it's free. And two, Two, it's just built right into the Unity Hub installer here, and I just don't care enough to try any other code editors. Actually, there's a secret reason number three why I use this, and that's because I make a lot of tutorials on this channel. There's a high likelihood that people that watch those videos are going to be using the same software as me as well, because that is the default. So I just don't want there to be any confusion there either. But I can tell you that when I first started using Unity, the default code editor, or IDE, was Mono Develop, and that was created by Unity, and let's just say that Microsoft Visual Studio Community is so so much better. I do find the IntelliSense to be pretty good and it's nice to work with the software that seems to know what I want to do. And once you've familiarized yourself with some of the keyboard shortcuts and some of the tricks, it's a very, very productive tool. It's pretty easy to take the dark background for granted, but not all of us always had it that way. The next segment is all about project planning. And when it comes to game planning, we recently switched to Codex. I was using Trello before, but I wasn't really using it for planning so much as just brain dumping different ideas and bugs. Now, I am happy to say that Codex is sponsoring this segment, and I can tell you that I took the time to learn their platform, and after seeing what it was capable of, I went to Nikki and I told her that we should be using this. So I can genuinely say that this is something that I recommend that you at least check out to see if it's a good fit for you, because after seeing it in action, I started using it myself. So this segment was scripted by me, not Codex, and it sums up my early experience with their platform. So thanks Codex for supporting the channel. After playing with their tool for just 15 minutes, I decided to migrate our plans for our game Samurado over to this system. Codex is the ultimate project management tool for devs, because it's created by game developers specifically for game developers. The main reason I love it so much is because it manages to show you all the information you need to know without overwhelming you. The design makes sure of it, because you organize all your tasks into cards that go into decks. But you can keep today's or this week's tasks, for example, in your hand. You can assign task priorities, give an effort rating, which makes it really easy to choose what you should work on next. But the power of this tool really stands out when you use it with a team. You can see who's working on what, mark a card for review, or even notify your team if you're blocked and ping people who you think can help. You can create milestones with due dates so your whole team knows where you're going at a glance. But one of the coolest things is Decky. This is a Discord bot that allows you to engage with your Discord community by collecting feature requests, ideas, and bug reports directly within your Discord server. And it'll keep fans in the loop by sharing what you're working on. Check the link in the description to get 30% off your first three months on the Codex Pro plan. 
Next is Art, and Nikki is the artist for Sasquatch Bee Studios, and she uses Photoshop. When I asked Nikki what her favorite thing about Photoshop is, because there are a lot of free alternatives and Photoshop is not free, she said the number one reason by far was that Photoshop has the most learning resources available. She's learning art on the fly, so she needs to be able to find information quickly, and with Photoshop, she's been able to do that. And I personally have used GIMP, I've used Krita a little bit, and finding tutorials for those is just a little bit more difficult. And the other thing she said is it's just the best tool for the job. A lot of the free alternatives that you'll find to Photoshop have specific strengths and weaknesses. Photoshop can do anything that you need it to do. So from day one of starting this studio, we decided that paying a small monthly fee for Photoshop was definitely worth it for us. Next is sound, and for that I use Audacity. So I don't usually create my own sound effects from scratch. I'll usually refer to sound effects packs that I've already bought, or I'll go to a website like freesound.org and download things that have the Creative Commons license. And then I'll either layer multiple tracks together, or slice them up, or add some effects on top of them, or some combination of all of that. I also use Audacity to record all of the tutorials for this channel, as well as all of our podcast episodes. And yes, if you didn't know, we do have a podcast. The link is down below in the description. I've been using this software for years, it's totally free and it's very powerful and really easy to use. Next is video editing software, and this might sound like a bit of a weird thing to talk about for game development, but you're going to need a little bit of video editing experience in order to at least put together some clips or some trailers to throw up on your social media accounts. I personally use DaVinci Resolve, it is very powerful and it is free. I've never been able to think of an idea that I wanted to do for a video that I wasn't able to do with DaVinci Resolve. Nikki is on a Mac, so she edits our Monday videos using Final Cut Pro, which is not not free. I believe it's a $400 one-time fee. But she absolutely swears by it and says it was worth every penny. Next is hardware, and my computer is an Acer Nitro 5. I would call it probably a mid-range gaming laptop. Though it is a little bit dated now, the graphics card is a NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650. Although with that graphics card, everything I've ever developed in Unity runs smooth like butter. I do really swear by using a laptop because Nikki will often need this office, especially on the weekends, in order to do video chats and things like that, so I'll just pick up my computer and go out to the dining room and do work out there on a Saturday afternoon. If I had a PC, I'd kind of be stuck and just not be able to do anything. I do have a fairly cheap second monitor, and it is really great having two screens because I'll always have Unity open on my left monitor and Visual Studio open on my right monitor. Nikki uses a MacBook from 2017. It cannot play games and it doesn't handle Unity very well, but it does handle what she needs it for very well, which is video editing and Photoshop. Now for art, if you are working on a 2D game, you're going to want a quality drawing tablet. Actually, I know that even a lot of 3D artists that work in Blender like to use drawing tablets as well. This is a Huion Canvas 13. I have no idea if I'm saying that right, but it's about a mid-range tablet. There are definitely cheaper ones and definitely more expensive ones, but Nikki did a lot of research before buying it. It's a very, very quality tablet. She swears by it and she's virtually never had a problem with it. I hope you found this list helpful and if you have any other tool recommendations, drop them down below in the comments. That's all I got. Bye.